Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I am going to be sharing with you my best kept beauty secrets for a flawless, perfected face. We're gonna be talking a little foundation-ish skin stuff, eyes, lips, and as I was prepping for this video, I will have you know that I kept going and going and going and going. I'm gonna try and keep it to a top 10 beauty makeup routine type secrets, but if you wanna know like the behind the scenes beauty hacks of self tanning, specifically nails, hair, brows, mascara, lashes, lips, contour, anything that you want me to zero in on and just give you my best techniques that I have discovered throughout the years, because I have a lot of them. Do we all remember I used to do Tip Tuesday? Thumbs up this video if you've been with me that long. And if you haven't, go back on my channel. There are so many videos. It was beauty tips in two minutes or less. And I would just every week be like, eh, da, 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 eh, da, 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 and it was just like all of these quick tips that were very useful and some of them I still do on the daily. Now these that we're getting into, some I have mentioned, most I have not. We're gonna get into the full meal deal and I'll show you a bit of application and whatnot. So without me blabbing on forever and ever and ever, let's dive right in. Let's just, let's just, we're off the high dive and into the land of perfecting our makeup. Technique number one, I have not shown you guys in action in a while. However, I still do this from time to time and I think it's an important technique and I kind of wanna just show you visually how easy it is to do this technique. Everyone wants to make doing their makeup a little more complicated than maybe it is and I have to say, I understand because in the reverse, I am learning how to cook right now. I did not grow up learning how to cook. Like honestly, four girls, parents split up when I was pretty young and we love you mom so much. Please don't be mad at me. But we did a lot of like sandwiches, McDonald's, Top Ramen. Like we were the kids on the go. Didn't really grow up like making dinner with mom. She's like giving me a swift education now, which is great. But long story short, I'm, I'm like as an adult adult, learning how to cook and actually enjoying it. But I always overcomplicate things where I'm like, well, how do you know if the chicken is blah? And like, it's literally the easiest thing ever. Or like learning how to use my Instapot, which you guys, I made um, chicken pot pie stew, healthy, delicious. Oh my gosh. If you guys want to see like something separate from beauty, I am thinking about it. That beast of a machine at first was scaring me so badly, like the steam release and everything. And then I did the bad thing of Googling like the like tragedy of Instapot and like you see one like through the roof and it's just like a whole thing. Long story short, once I did it myself like on my own, like a big girl for the first time, I was like, that is like so easy. Why was I making it a big deal? I kind of feel that way about makeup when I'm educating someone new to makeup and they're like, wait, how many pumps of foundation? And then I do what with it? and I dampen the beauty blender. And like, we get in our head of this insecurity of like, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing. But really, once you do something once, you're gonna have the confidence to keep going back to it. And you're like, oh yeah, why did I ever think this was hard? Now, that's like a lot of these techniques and tips. So that was a really long way to intro this very simple foundation technique that a lot of makeup artists swear by. Scott Barnes in particular taught me this technique, so shout out to him. Um, I put him in my top three in every category video. I will link that below. A lot of his makeup is just like forever fave. Ooh, I am running low on this, you guys. Okay, so I have the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. We all know this is a super full coveragey full, full, full coverage foundation, much like the Huda Beauty would be another full coverage foundation, Estee Lauder Double Wear. Now what you can do, not to take away the coverage, but to smooth it out so that a product will sink into the skin and blend more seamlessly and just wear better all together. Now it seems frightening to do this because a lot of people are like, Ugh, I don't want my face to be like greasy and gross. It's not gonna do that. What I'm recommending is taking one drop of your favorite facial oil. It can be any oil, it does not have to be a particular kind as long as it is a face oil that your skin agrees with. I will take literally one drop and then I will usually take a spatula and mix together and then I will go in with my Blendiful, which is what I use today. 
So I'm just gonna use my finger to mix this together. Then I will show you the Blendiful or anything of this texture, something more velvety. Ooh, girlfriend needs to tan her arms. Let's all just pretend that that's, um, that's an, a beauty secret that's happening off camera tonight. What I will do is I will kind of use this on the areas I want super, super coverage. And then if you ever want lighter coverage, um, this is like bonus, bonus beauty secret. It depends on what you apply. Like a dampened beauty blender is going to pull some of the product back. I would not necessarily use the oil technique with the dampened beauty blender because water and oil don't mix. So this is like for this technique, bye bye but you can use a duo fiber brush. This happens to be the Scott Barnes 6-8, my favorite duo fiber brush. This, you can go on the neck really beautifully. It spreads the product out. And then what I'll do is on the areas that I want more coverage, I will actually pull a little bit like this and blot in. The oil and foundation technique is so gorgeous to just juice up the skin maintain coverage, and it's not gonna bunch apart or break apart. Also, if you want more slip from a product like this right here, some of you guys are like, uh, it's, it's too hard to blend, which this one on its own is not bad, but I have used palettes in the past that are a little bit more stiff, and if you don't wanna be warming the product up forever, you can take an oil with this as well. What I would do is spatula out onto your palette and you're like a pro makeup artist at home and it works beautifully just to make the skin hydrated, glow, coverage, it helps things to layer better. It's just one of those things that you have to try to be wowed by. Moving right along. This was not on the list, but it is bonus time with Tati. I love taking my leftover foundation, a little bit of a, ew, that looks disgusting. A little bit of a body bronzer, if I have not been tanning. And then I usually take some kind of a lotion. I'm actually gonna take Max Strobe Cream. I like to just mix things together. This is the artist side of me, I guess. I often will use the end of a brush, mix everything together on my palette, which I am doing right here. Take the tissue, clean this guy off, flip her around, and then you have kind of a more diluted body makeup. This is great on the legs, great on the arms. This particular product from Loving Tan sinks in really quickly and just gives the skin a little coverage from any veins popping through. And also if you're me, it will help you if you like bronzer and contour to match your face a little bit better. Okay. Ooh, she is... I am uh, a little more bronzed, matched, all of that. The quickest tip, this is technically tip number two, kind of three. I always have to have a box of tissue on my vanity. Now, I don't care if you're a makeup newbie, if you are advanced, have a paper towel, a microfiber towel, or a tissue near you, not toilet paper, toilet paper with the fibers, it's gonna get everywhere, but have a tissue all of the time. If you're like me, and you want a brush to have even distribution of color. This is what I use for my blush today. Now, what I used to do is I would always go like this and then I'd get makeup everywhere on my body. I really love having more than just a smack off of the brush. I like swirling in something. So when I'm going in a palette like this and I'm grabbing product and I'm getting a bunch on there, I like to give it a whap, but then I also like to go like this so that I'm getting an even coating on the brush and there's a little bit taken off so that when I go on the face, I'm not going in with this crazy intensity. I always notice that I goof up if I'm filming and I don't pay attention and do my typical wipe down. It will be too saturated. I use this technique for shadow. I use this technique for bronzer. And then also it's just a nice double check. Like I have had one too many occasions where I will take a brush and I will not know that it is dirty. You know, have your, your little tissue there just to kind of wipe off that excess of whatever shadow you used last in between cleaning. Great to do that as well. Sometimes you'll be like, whoa, that was like black from a intense smoky eye and you're happy that you did the double check. It's just nice 
to have something to wipe everything down with. I know that seems like a dumb tip maybe for some of you, but it makes a huge, huge difference. Also, you can always take your tissue, and this is especially with using the oil technique. And if you have not set the face yet, and you see a little bit of oil popping through before you go on with powder, if you don't want the powder to grip and become almost putty-like, take just a piece of tissue and press the skin. You don't wanna rub it, you just want to press the skin and dab that oil off of the oily areas before you go and set with powder. It'll just get that top layer of oil off, that way your skin's juiced up like within and you've pressed the product into the skin beautifully, but you're getting rid of that top layer, then the powder's not gonna grip to anything and get all gummy, and you're gonna have a beautiful, beautiful finish. Moving into some eyeshadow techniques that are game changers, super simple, and these days I like to be bam bam out the door, or uh, shall I say bam bam, stay at home, but looking cute. So what I have gotten in the habit of is using the one shade, two brush technique where I will take a fluffier brush first. I will always have my eye primed. I will take one shade. It doesn't have to be dark or light or medium. You can do this technique really with anything. If you want it to be a smoky eye, go with a richer chocolate. If you want just that nice haze of smokiness in the crease and you're gonna go in on the lid with something a little more intense and line and do the whole thing, then do like a nice peachy or saddle color. If you wanna have this be your one and done out the door, you can do a medium mid-tone shade, cool or warm tone. So what you'll do is you'll dunk your initial brush in straight down. I like to plop the brush right into the shade, tap it off, go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, sing yourself a little song, count to 25, just don't stop blending right away. That's another thing that people do and they expect like pro results is they'll go in one, two, and they're like, I don't know why this is not blended. It's like, because you didn't blend it. Like you really, you gotta like, you gotta put some wrist in there. You know what I'm saying? You gotta like circle, 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 bop, 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 circle, 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 dot, dot, dot. Like we're doing a dance of blending. It's gonna take a minute. It's not gonna take 20, but it's gonna take a minute. So do that first lay down of color and then take your tinier, more narrow tapered brush, do the same shade, dunk it in the same way, bam, bam, bam do the same technique, but a little bit lower, and you're gonna get a gradient that looks so flawless and expertly done because it is the same shade, starting from a more saturated application to that more fanned out, kind of like an ombre, smoothed out, airbrush, blown out application from that first lay down with the fluffier brush. If you wanna go a step further, you can always take your brush and coat the side of it instead of the tip of it, lay it down on its side, tap off the excess and just get that outer edge. What I did then was wherever there was a space of blank lid showing through, I took a similar tone with a little bit of metallic finish and patted that on with my fingertip, done. Do a little mascara, done. You are just like under five, great eye look. Another technique that I love so much that I started doing because the clock is ticking, time goes on, I'm not getting any younger. And with my deep set eyes where the bone is starting to really become a little more prominent here, I have to blend a little bit differently than I once did. I have to spend just a little more time and I have found a technique if you like the more, not full cut crease, but you want a more defined crease look, I have a hack. Kind of strange, I don't really know exactly why this works and this is gonna be for anyone who has this issue with a little extra, like your lid kind of tucks into your eye and you have a hard time getting a defined crease. You're gonna take a mirror flat. You're going to hover over like you are looking over the mirror. We're talking eh, like look down in the mirror. Take your crease brush. Do all your blending while you are letting gravity kind of move your eye shape and your crease in a way where you can blend differently. It's something I did randomly one day and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like my eyeshadow has never looked better blended. What is this? And I started doing it more and more. I called my sisters and I was like, you have hooded eyes. Try this, tell me what you think. And 
it's an amazing, amazing thing to get a really beautiful blend, but really saturated color in the crease. Try it out, let me know what you think. For this look, I went in with the two brush technique, but a darker shade and was more over the mirror. And then I took a lighter shade, a lighter metallic on the lid, fingertip, bam, bam, bam. These are looks that are under five minutes to do. Threw on some mascara and that is it. If you are curious what is on my eyes right now, I'm about to share with you that this is my third eye technique that will get me, you know, feeling really cute and done with my makeup pretty quickly. And it's just more elegant in my opinion to use one shade and lashes. It's something that I think is fast. You can go all over the lid and into the crease a little bit with a slightly metallic shade. You can get away with like a, a satin to metallic shade and it will blow out the whole lid to crease. I mentioned this in one video before. And then what I like to do is take my fingertip in the shade that I'm using on the lid and in the crease and kind of tap it on the lid itself closer to the lash line. And it's like the quickest smoky eye of your life. And then you pop on some wispy eyelashes. Well, you can do the same thing, but just using glitter. Now I didn't put anything in the crease, zero zilch, nothing in the crease. I took a lash glue. This is the Brianna have this was sent to me, to be honest. I tried it out. I've never heard of this brand and I really, really liked it. So I wanna share it with you guys. And I feel terrible that I cannot read this, but I will put it in the description box below. This is a glue that I put on the palette, fingertip, dab, dab, dab. And then I took the same brand's glitter and this is in the shade Rose Gold. I just took my fingertip. I always tilt my head back a little bit bam, bam, bam. And I have to emphasize with this particular look, it's so important that you don't get it in your head that you have to put anything in the crease, that you have to use liner, that you have to do anything other than a lighter glitter bare lid below. Like there's nothing, there's just the glitter. And that way it just kind of catches the light and gives you this like, is there something there? Is there not? You add on some wispy lashes where the light can kind of shine through the lashes where they're not so full that they're taking over or taking away from the shimmeriness of the look, but they're definitely framing the eye. I think this kind of a look is best when you do throw on a strip lash. So that is like my easy, if I'm like, I wanna like jazz it up a little bit and be a little more glam but I want to do it like in under three minutes, right? Just like bam, 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 done. Throw on a little mascara on the lower lash and you are out the door. I feel like I'm going to have to do another video on this topic because I just have too many things to share with you guys. I feel like I could just like sit here. Maybe I should do like a live or something and just talk for like an hour and be like, okay. Like I have so much running in my head. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this video and you want to see like a part two let me know. I'm gonna wrap it up with one of my favorite lip techniques. And this is not discussed too much. I don't like doing liquid lipstick very often. I find that liquid lipstick can just make those lines on your mouth look super weird. It can get crackly depending on the formula. And sometimes, especially with darker shades, it is super tough. Like it's so opaque and wet that you're kind of like shaking, putting it on. You're like, Ugh, and you get outside that line and then it dries down and it's this whole thing. I have a hard time with liquid lip. So my hack for it is to line your lips. And what I do is I will take whatever liquid lip I am using. I will take it on my middle finger. I will spread it out like this. I will dab it, like dot it on the bottom and start from the center and kind of slowly fan it out. Now, as I'm doing this, I am making the world's most unattractive face. I don't like the liquid lip to dry and then have the lines. So I literally go like this. Let's all screen grab this together. I literally like make sure that my lips are like this as it's drying so that when my lips relax, there's color saturated everywhere. Again, this is gonna be another one of those, if you're over 30, you're gonna love this because as we age, ladies, you know, the lines in your lips get a little bit weirder, right? They're not as smooth as they once were. That being said, 
I always like to add a little bit of juice, a little bit of hydration on top of the liquid lip once it has set. So I'll go in and I will show you guys. I love this gloss from Fawn. This is in the shade A Nude. And I do Scott Barnes's technique where you'll go back forth, but then on the upper lip especially, start right here is so the most saturated colors in the center of the lip. And then you kind of pull and it just barely gives you some shine right here and it just makes the lips look bigger. Now, you don't always have to put a gloss on top of a liquid lip, obviously, but why I like doing that is because I will then go in, blot it off. I still have a tiny bit of shine that's catching light, making my lips look more full. The liquid lip has been set with my lips like this, so the color's perfectly even, and then there's just this little hint of hydration left behind that's not sticky, that's not gloppy, that's gonna help this to wear better throughout the day. But as that stickiness dissipates, because it's a liquid lip, it's going to stay staining and giving coverage to your lip look all day long. Also great if you are wearing a face mask. All right, so these were like tips with added tips on tips and different beauty secrets that I love. Some of them are just my own techniques. Some of them I've given other people, Scott Barnes dominantly. I think two of these are his techniques in here. If you want me to also try other celebrity makeup artists techniques, like I've thought about doing like a full face of so-and-so style of makeup. Let me know what artists you would want me to do their tutorials or do their techniques. Let me know. I, I That's something that just came to my head. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I love you all so much. Feel free to leave below your tips and techniques as well. Let's share our beauty secrets, help each other out, and go have a good one whatever you are doing. I will see you all in my next video. Mwah. YouTube filming secret, I'm literally using a claw clip to like make sure that I do not expose myself on my channel because this blouse does not want to fit correctly, but I like the pattern, right? Yay, okay.